baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Are we for the reading of the word of the Lord? I'd like for you to go back with me, please, to the Old Testament. The book of Genesis. Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis, the first chapter. And if you don't have a Bible, maybe you can look on with someone. Genesis 1 and 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. First part of the 26th verse. God said, let us make man. Everybody say, make man. 27th verse. So God created man. Everybody say the word created man. Seventh verse, same chapter. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Seventh verse again. And the Lord God formed man. Everybody say, formed man. Eighth verse, almost through the Scripture, it said, And there he put the man. Everybody say, he put the man. The progression is, make man, create man, form man, put man. Also, to the New Testament, please. To the book of Colossians. Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians, the first chapter. And the 14th verse. Colossians 1 and 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Speaking of Jesus. Even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn. Of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him. All things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I'm titling this thought today, It's All in Him. It's All in Him. Amen. Beautiful presence of the Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. For whom all things are made. And were made by Him. And He was before all things. And I'm going to explain that to you today. Oh my. All things are in Christ. 
Amen. I'm asking Brother Lyman, if you will, to come and to pray. Would you reach over to your neighbor, sister to a sister, brother to a brother, and pray for one another right now that God's will will be done. Let's pray together, shall we? Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your presence here today. Lord, let this be a memorial today, God, for somebody's life. God, fill them with your spirit. God, you are the author of everyone's life, God. Let this be the page in somebody's life that your blood covers it, Lord Jesus, that fills their life, God, with power, God, with purpose. Oh, God, do your will today, God. For there is none like you, God, so great and so mighty, Lord. Do that which is exceptional. Exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. God, let your power, God, be in this place. And the altars also, Lord. Fill somebody's life, God. Rewrite, God, their life. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say praise the Lord. You may be seated. I had something happen to me this past week. That of all things I dread in the earth, I dread this. Something happened this past week that I literally cannot bear to have happened to me. I had car trouble. I think I had rather face a rattler with a gun, of course, than I had to have car trouble. I believe I'd rather take on a hundred brown recluses with nothing but a stick than I had to have car trouble. I hate car trouble. Especially when you're sitting there in the cool of your car and it's about 110 on the hood. And suddenly you hear this and steam just comes floating out of the grill. And it's not frankincense unto the Lord. Something has broke within your car. It is a horrible feeling to be there in the heat of the afternoon and to see water running like the Colorado out from under your radiator. That's almost unbearable. I think I'd rather face anything to face that. But it opens up experiences that you possibly would not have any other time. Because being in distress with a car is a feeling that all humanity shares. There's something about somebody being broke down on the side of the highway that elicits out of you empathy and sympathy even if you are in a race and can't stop you do run by them saying oh or possibly if you see them jacking up the car and changing the tire you're going oh my I feel for them I'm glad it's not me but there, there is that feeling that comes from the depth of the soul is it not amen Now, I know most of you stopped and changed the tire for them. So, let's continue on with the story. I was stuck on 6th Street down beyond Lamar. My wife wanted to go in and and get a little bit of ice cream. So, I I tarried a while outside while she went in to get Amy's ice cream. And while she took her good time, my car burned up on me. And so I tried to make it down the hill and up the hill to a service station. And I broke down somewhere on the side up in an area that I am not normally used to going into. And there were three young men that were there. And they were not given to normal lifestyle as possibly I would know it. They had Budweiser's in each hand practically. And had earrings that I thought could never ever go in some places. And while they were standing there and saw the steam coming out of my car, it did not matter that I had a suit on. They came down the hill to help me. And I thank God for humanity. I looked upon these three men and I began to feel compassion for them. I thought, you were not made to drink a Budweiser. You were made to drink the holy wine of the Holy Ghost. My God, jewelry was not made to be put on the body. No, sir, it's meant to go in a crown of glory. 
that each and every one of us will wear one day when we see the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we's gonna, we're going to crown Him. We're going to take the crowns off of our head and put it at His feet and crown Him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We were made in His image. And though these three men were not thinking of God, and though they were not serving God, yet at this moment we had a common bond around a broken down car. These men, not even knowing when they came down the hill, were coming down to help a preacher. Though their life was not even concerned with anything about God, yet God had a divine plan for their life and for your life and for my life. And it's all in Jesus Christ, my God. When I read to you the words penned in Colossians, the first chapter, by this man called Paul, I want you to know when I read it to you, could you not feel the power of it? Could you not sense the awesomeness of the Word of God and the revelation that came to this mighty apostle called Paul? He had an understanding that Jesus Christ is the express image of the invisible God. That God was so pleased, our Heavenly Father, to dwell in that body. Everything that God is and was and would ever be was in Jesus Christ. Couldn't you sense it as we read the Word of God? But oh, may I remind you that the pen held by these hands was also the hand that waved across the very life and shadow. Fell as a shadow across Stephen's life when they took and killed Stephen. The man that wrote Colossians, the first chapter, was a killer and a murderer before he came to Jesus Christ. He had men, women, and children killed because of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This man, though he went to synagogues and worshipped Jehovah, he was a vile and ungodly godly and ruthless man. But oh, there was something down inside of this man. Though he had killed, God said, I'm going to turn him into one of mine. I want you to know when Jesus comes on the scene and begins to work, something glorious and wonderful and marvelous begins to happen. I don't care who you are. I said, I don't care what you are. Amen. My God can do anything. I said, my God can do anything. (laughs) Praise God. When Paul, who had once been a murderer and an evil man and against Jesus Christ, penned these words, he was locking in and tying back to the beautiful book of Genesis. Genesis means beginnings. It was the beginnings for the creation of God in the world of nature. That by His spoken word, the world came into existence. And then the seas, and then light. Then the seas took their place, and then came land. And with land came trees and the flowers. Then came the fowls, the fish of the sea, and then mankind. Then the cattle, everything in its time, place, and order. And upon each of them, God placed this tag. It was good. Hallelujah. It was very good. All of this by the hand of God Almighty. What a marvelous, marvelous thing. But above all that God has ever done, in that He created man, was the most beautiful and the apex of His creation. How many uh, uh, are subscribers to National Geographic? Does anybody get the magazine? There's approximately three to four families that get the magazine. We get it on a regular basis. I almost hate giving my money to them because the poor, precious people have never come to the knowledge of the good Word of God. They struggle so much. It's amusing to me as I watch them try somehow to make in objective ways that they say man was not created by God. 
He was some amoeba in the water swirling around among the muck and mire. And that amoeba took on a little tail. And that tail took on a head. And after a while, it come crawling out of the water. Looked at a tree and said, I'd like to swing from that. Swinging from that tree. Looked at a banana and says, that looks like that's what I want to eat the rest of my life. Somewhere in the middle of that, that monkey said, I need an eternal soul. So he develops an eternal soul. I look at that and say, oh my God. They shall increase with knowledge, but never come to the knowledge of the truth. I'm so glad that my relatives didn't swing from a tree. Now, some of them may have for the crimes they committed, but they were not a monkey. Hallelujah. I want you to know God made you and me in His image. Beautiful is this creation. Glorious and magnificent. Amen. 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 But I want you to take note through the Scripture and then relating back to Genesis, the first chapter. Now, I want you to understand this story. When that mother held that baby for the first time, almost 2,000 years ago, in the city of Bethlehem. And no, this is not a Christmas story. That's sometimes the only people ever think about the babe and the mom. But when she held that baby in her arms and heard the cry, the first cry of this baby, Little did she understand the fullness of what was going on right now. As she held this little small child, possibly six pounds, seven ounces. rolling in. Hallelujah. And so when she held that little baby in her arms, she didn't know. But this baby is something God had had in mind before he ever created the world. Oh, my. Oh, my. Let me tell you something. That body of Jesus Christ was not before Bethlehem. He was created in the womb of Mary, but he was in the mind of God. There's no such thing as a Stone Age man. No, there's no such thing as somebody living in a cave. Let me tell you something. We were formed in the image of Jesus Christ. When that mother held that baby, I want you to know that's the plan God had from the beginning. I want you to see the progression of this. When God begins to work upon the ultimate of His creation. In that, 27th, uh, in that 26th verse, And God said, Let us make man. There came a time in God's relationship concerning angels that He decided, Now is the time to bring forth my best. Now, friend, I don't want to shock you. I, I don't want to blow your theology. But Gabriel in all of his men, And Michael in all of his power cannot even begin to compare with who you are right now sitting right where you're sitting. Not the cherubims, not the archangel, not all of his creation can begin to imagine, can even begin to match what is sitting on this pew right now. You do not know the power that lies within you when you're born again. These two hands have power to create. You're made in God's image. This mind, we only use one-tenth of our brain. Help us all. Some of us only use one percent. What if we used a hundred percent? What if we used all of our capacity? We were made in the image of God Almighty. God has made you for higher things. You're not made to sit there and suck on a cigarette and blow smoke at Marlboro. You're not a Marlboro man. You're after Jesus Christ's image. God didn't make you to curse. He made you to praise and to magnify Him and give Him glory. First of all, in the process of coming into Christianity. Those of you that didn't, do not know Jesus today, you're not born again of the water and the Spirit, and you're not serving God. You need this understanding. Let it come to your mind and heart strong. God has something for you. It's beautiful in His sight. Number one, the Bible said, let us make man. 
this is the first process. It was physical creation. God already had the image of what Jesus Christ would be. He made you and I after him. He begins to start with that. He has the image of Christ. He begins to work on it. Let us make man. I want you to know God has a plan for your life. There's some people that are in here cold and backslid and away from the Lord. He's had the image of Jesus. Oh, my God, for eons of ages. And he's ready to put it into your heart. He's ready to do it. Why struggle? Why fight? Why resist? Why wait another day? I feel the Word and the Spirit in this tabernacle saying, Let us make Him in our image. Let us make her in our image. Amen. God begins to form and begins to make Christ into your life. When He makes, it's something that He starts with. And he begins to work toward it. The Bible said, so God created him in his own image. Now, each of these that I read to you, all of them have seemingly the same meaning. When you talk about make, when you talk about create, and when you talk about form, each of these have a look like the same meaning. But in the Hebrew, they have different root words, beginnings. The reason why is each of these is a progress and stage. Now, let me relate this to you in typology. What he did in the physical, in the book of Genesis, he's doing every day to somebody's life around the world. He's looking in upon the troubled seas. He's beginning to form the atmosphere around you. He's beginning to create things that are going to happen good in your life. Are you ready for some good things to happen? Are you tired of the same old? Would you like to go to the workplace Monday and feel good in your soul? Would you like to see things begin to change? He pushes back the stormy clouds. He rolls back the stormy seas. And he begins to form something for your life. Something beautiful. Something glorious. Right out of the middle of something ugly. Really, the truth of the matter is, it's not the location of your physical body. It's the location of your spiritual heart. It's not where you are. It's what's inside of you. Hallelujah. I, I really, I, I don't, God help me. I've asked God to help me how to preach this today. I knew I was going to have a little struggle with it because it's so tremendous. And I said, God, don't let me run by them. I don't want to get so intellectual with the Word of God that I just blow by you and you don't catch it. I'm going to stop and bring it down to everyday living. Your world so troubled when God's Spirit looks upon it and begins to speak. He has something in mind. He's going to make something out of you. And He's already got the image. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. It's not another drunkard. It's not another liar. It's not another adulterer. It's Jesus Christ. There was a little boy the other day in Orlando went up to President Clinton. He said, when I grow up, I want to grow up to be a president just like you. No, son. You want to grow up to be a child of the living God. Jesus was tempted in all manner like as you and I, but he never sinned. There was no guile that was found in his mouth. He went about doing good unto all mankind. That's what you want to be. That's what you want to be made into. The Hebrew each time is showing progression. Let us make man. God had this image in his mind. He went from the image in his mind to creating man. What he had in mind, he began to put it into action. That spirit of the living God began to move upon that dust. My God, could the National Geographic been there to take pictures? Lord, help us. Hallelujah. Adam means red. Somewhere in red clay. Somewhere down in Mesopotamia. They believe the first race probably come out somewhere down near Turkey. Maybe somewhere in that area. 
wherever red clay was, the cradle of civilization. God's Spirit began to move upon that red clay. And He called Him Adam, which means red. Out of the red clay. God said, we're going to make something. Watch it, angels. Here we go. And He begins to create man according to the image that He has inside of His mind. You didn't know, but when you walked in here, God already had something planned for your life. Make me. What are you going to make me? I'm going to make you happy. I'm going to make you joyous. Hallelujah. I'm going to make you a saint out of a sinner. I'm going to make you a happy saint. I'm going to change you. God is a God of progression. He's not the status quo. He won't leave you where you are. He'll come where you are and lift you up. From that make, He began to create. When you come down here and repent of your sins, God is telling the angel, I'm fixing to make something out of him. I'm fixing to make something out of her. I love to watch people talk in tongues for the first time in their life. I still get excited. Oh, God, I get so excited when I watch somebody speak in English. And praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. I want to change. Ah, here it comes. Oh, man. Whew, another one got the Holy Ghost. I sat in a restaurant one day in, in uh, Leesville, Louisiana. Yeah, I was. Man, a ratty little old place. You talk about the greasy spoon. It looked like they hadn't cleaned those windows in years. He was almost scared to touch the front door. But, oh, they had good food. Hey, Amen. Just close your eyes and don't look at the floor. Just keep eating. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Sometimes you got to do that. There's a place over in Jackson called the Mayflower. Don't ever go back where they're cooking. Hallelujah. It's something you'll never forget. Hallelujah. But you've got to like good food to be able to overlook everything going on. Hey, Amen. I was sitting there and I was eating the Way at Grease, the spoon in Leesville, Louisiana, enjoying that greasy hamburger. When there came over the intercom, a song I never heard. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. And I listened to that and said, What in the world? Another one bites the dust. What are they talking about? Another one bites the dust. Hey, Amen. Another one gets the Holy Ghost. Another one gets the Holy Ghost. My oh, God, when the Spirit of the Lord begins to flow. Woo! He said, angels, watch this. And his spirit moved on the dust of the earth. And he made a man. Come on. Hallelujah. You were made out of the dust of the earth. God found you in a gutter of sin. And he said, watch this, angels. I'm fixing to do it again. Am I having a good time? You better believe I'm having a good time. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Somebody clap your hands. You act an excited preacher. Yeah? You wait till I get to heaven. When he puts me there. Oh, look out. I'm fixing to blow this message. Just like we just blew a fuse a little bit ago. When a preacher gets like this, if he ain't careful, he'll blow the whole message. You get so excited, you want to hurry up and get there. That's how I feel about heaven today. I want to hurry up and get there. I want to be with Jesus. I want to be serving the Lord for eternity. Amen. Each word in the Hebrew, there is a different root to it. To each one of these words created. When he began to create man, then the Bible said the next time he began to form man. He has an image, then he has a creation, then he has a forming. You're not just flesh, you're an eternal spirit. There is something within you that will never die. It'll either be in heaven or hell, according to your understanding of God. I'm trying to present a God to you that loves you. This good work that He has begun in you, is He not able to finish it? Man, if He could take this kind of care with an earth, how much more can He take care of your earth and this all put something in it? I 
Hallelujah. He began to form Adam. A total man. Eve, a total woman. I want you to know your makeup isn't just flesh. You just don't give yourself. President Clinton is finding this out real quickly. You don't just give yourself to every whim and desire in this life. There is something that that is God-ordained. A divine providence that God has within you. And it's trying to awaken right in the middle of this message out of Ohio. There's something you were born with. It's a God recognition. It's a cry within your soul. My God, it's like the man crying out for Jesus. Oh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Something within you is wanting to be formed. I don't want to just be an image. I don't want to just be a created creature. I want to be formed. That's why people can have a string of degrees and have a life filled with nothing but measure of measure of pain and sorrow. That's why people can be multimillionaires. Oh, you know why? Because God has a stage that every man, woman, and child has got to come to. It isn't just in God's mind. It isn't just something that you're here made. But He wants to form you. He wants to take that broken personality. He wants to take that shattered life. That old prophet Jeremiah went down to the potter's house. And he watched the potter begin to work with the clay. Around and around. My, my, my. How beautiful is that hand so deftly begins to work out the impurities within that clay. Oh, with dexterity, that wheel spinning and those hands forming until something begins to shape out of nothing but a lump. That's where God does you in an altar when He gives you the Holy Ghost and you're baptized in His name. Things begin to change. You know what happened? He takes out the sin. He takes out the debauchery. He takes out the evil, the lion, the corruption, and He begins to change you. People don't know how much fun we have living for God. They don't understand. There's something beautiful in serving the Lord. I love to clap my hands. I love to shout. I love to praise God. He's forming me. Hallelujah. He's going beyond the stage. Uh, I am man of creation. He's working something out within my life. Day by day, God is forming you. These are the stages of the next. After God has brought you through the stage and process of let us make man. And then He has begun to create you. And then He begins to form you. Then comes the next progress. He puts you in. We who are alienated from God. Strangers from the commonwealth of God. God took us and had an image for you and for me. Some of you that are shaking your head right now. Not too long ago, you were doing this. You don't know how glorious it is to be a preacher. To watch people sit there. Oh, they may not do it in the physical sense, but you can see it in their eyes. I don't think so. <laughs> but like the guy I witnessed to the other day, he said, I don't think so. And he laughed at me. He said, I don't want that. Oh, I thought, oh God, sir, if you only knew what I have. These earthen vessels have treasure hidden within it. I have the pearl of Kashabahaya. I have the pearl of great price. Oh God, Christ formed in you. Something's going on. I can't explain it in the natural. Something's happening. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love it, I love it. And while you're being formed, you're being prepared to be put into the church of the living God. And after doing this long enough, your neck starts hurting. So you want to change. Oh, yeah, that feels better. 
I don't ever want to do that again. And I'm, I'm looking at saints that are here right now that have gotten the Holy Ghost in the last little while. You sit here, and I saw you. Mm, 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 mm. And you were doing this. Mm, 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 mm. What's the difference? What happened? You walked in here with your life busted up. Your family coming unglued. Your mind messed up. Drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, tobacco, demons raging inside of you. And now here you are, born again, washed in the blood. Woo! I'm a child of the king. I'm washed in the blood. Hallelujah, he has born me. Oh, how beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful. He's a kaku samarata. He lava hosanda lava. You can have it while I'm preaching right now. Kisororo kromayane. You may be seated. Yororo shana. Spirit of God wooing and loving you, caring for you, when He forms you into the image of Jesus Christ. He takes you and puts you in the church. He put Adam and Eve in the garden. He put them in the place called paradise. This place is 4911 Harmon Avenue to the mailman. This place is 4911 Harmon Avenue to the man that reads the gas meter. This place is 4911 Harmon Avenue. To the man that comes by and checks how much water we have used during church. Hila Mahaya, praise God. But today, who congregate, it is that holy city come down. Mara Mahasatana. 4911 Harmon Avenue is paradise. Oh, there's a river. That flows through this tabernacle. Ooh, there's the fruit of the Spirit that hangs heavy from the trees. When you come to church, you stepped into a garden of praise and worship. You better worship. You better worship. Adam abused what he had, he lost it in the garden. Come on, you can lose it right here. This is the place you overcome. Come on, church. This is the place you overcome, isn't it? This is the place you get victory in your life. I'm hurrying. 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 Sit down for just one more moment. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. I got to hurry in this thing. Somebody's got to get the Holy Ghost. Somebody's got to get born again. I'm hurrying. Hurry. Somebody's ready to have this in their life. I'm hurrying. Come on. It was in the garden. Adam had it all. But he didn't take advantage of it. He lost it in the garden. He lost it. He lost it in the garden. He lost it. The Bible said God drove him out. God clothed him and Eve. While you're sitting here today trying to sow fig leaves. Somehow trying to cover yourself up and say, I don't act like these people. Instead of saying, What's wrong with them? You need to say, What's wrong with me? I can't worship like they worship. What do they have that I don't have? What is it that makes them so happy? I wish I could clap my hands like that. I wish I could get excited. I wish when I felt this week through the auditorium, what this is, this isn't human emotion. This is the Holy Ghost. I wish I could get up. I wish I could say praise the Lord. I wish I could say hallelujah. You know what? We've been put in the church of the living God. And you 
matter what's happened to us, we're not sowing fig leaves anymore. We have a garment that's been washed white in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. You may be seated. We had a big old fig tree out back of our house. Delicious figs. Beautiful, massive fig tree when I lived in my hometown. We'd go pick those figs every time at harvest. They have some of the sweetest tasting jam. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good on bread. But it sure don't make a good covering. It don't make a good covering. And so many churches have got a fig tree to the side. Here you go. Here's some more fig leaves. You had another bad week. Come on down here and get another charge. And that's all you got. Fig leaves. Cover yourself every day of your life. This is all your life is. I feel good one minute, feel like cussing the next. I've overcome drugs one minute, and I'm back on cocaine the next. I lay down all the sin, and I pick it right back up. All I got is fig leaves. And that's all they do is sew it on every day. And that's all churches got to offer. I got something else beside fig leaves. It's called the Holy Ghost. It's called the Holy Ghost. It'll change you. It'll transform you. It'll pick you up. It'll turn you around. Come on, everybody pray. Oh, everybody pray. Woo. Come on, pray for somebody right now. What you got? I got the Holy Ghost. Pray, church. Pray, church. Because he's the head of my pray, life. Pray, everybody, pray. I'm happy in Jesus. For the world of sin, he brought me out. You Don't see, I'm walking in darkness. Don't stop me. The world of sin, lift your Jesus hands. Jesus saved me. And now oh, I'm for him. Oh, my God. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Everybody lift your hands and worship. I'm happy. I'm happy. Happy. What's happening to you? Happy in Jesus, because he's the head of my life. God's doing something to me. I'm happy. Happy God's in doing Jesus, from the world of sin. He brought me out. You see, I step to the water. The oh, water was cold. He Let was my body, but it saved my soul. Oh, I'm happy. happy. Come on, church. I am happy. Oh, I am happy. I got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Oh, you don't know how happy I am. Pray, everybody, pray right now. You don't know what you it means know. to me. The heart is the Holy Ghost. The body needs me. What I need for morning won't be very long. You're gonna look for me, but I'll be good. I'll be happy. I'm happy. I will be happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Lift your hands and praise Him right now. Come on. I want everybody to stand in this auditorium to the glory and the presence of Jesus Christ. You know what's fixing to happen to you that are born again? He's fixing to put you in heaven. You listen to me? That trumpet's going to sound. And when Christ has been formed in you and God is through with what He has for your life, He's going to put you in heaven. And nobody will ever take you out. No devil, no sin, no temptation. My God, somebody lift your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all come. Bring somebody with you. Oh, you don't know how happy I am. Let's all come and love the Lord. I've got the solid rock that sin. You don't know what it means to me. To have this holy ghost that fight in me. I'm dead in the water. Everybody come. What I want to call. Heal my Bring body. Bring somebody with you. I'm happy. I'm happy. You better believe I'm happy. I'm happy. You better believe I'm happy.
happy. I'm happy. Why don't you come get the Holy Ghost? Yeah. You see, I'm happy. Gather around and pray through. He brought me out. I was walking in darkness. Pray through the Holy Ghost. Shackle and sin. But Jesus saved me. And now I live for him. I'm happy. happy. Come on, let's all come. I'm happy. happy. I told you to bring him, church. I'm happy. Tell you it's going to happen. I told you I was going to happen today. I told you I was going to come. He brought me out. My God. The water was cold. He was my body, but it satisfied my soul. I'm happy. I'm happy, 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 happ
Holy Ghost. 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 To have this Holy Ghost abiding in me. I want to do some more and it won't be very long. God's going to put us in here. But I've been going on home. I'll be happy. Oh, so happy. So happy. Oh, so happy. Oh, happy. Happy. Oh, happy. Happy. Oh, 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 happy. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings unto the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow. Become a servant of righteousness. Keep self pure. Be an example. Have faith in God. Follow Jesus. Put first things first. Resist temptation. Be faithful and be fruitful. <laughs> 